What's up guys, Ryan here from Mud Gunner, and today I just wanted to show you guys some cool handguns, and yes, this is an AR, but uh, I figured we might as well add just a little bit of each type of handgun, so I tried to grab a couple different ones. I feel like on my channel, I definitely neglect posting handguns. It's not because I don't like handguns, I'm just more into rifles, that's really what it is, but I do have a bunch of cool handguns, not as much as my like AR setups or rifle setups in general, but um, yeah, I figured I might as well show you guys some cool ones, so let's get into it. We'll start off with the AR. Again, I chose this just so we have an AR pistol to throw in the mix, but this is a Daniel Defense PDW, and while it may not be like rare, uh, it is a cool one. And even though it's cool, I've actually never shot this one. Um, the reason why I haven't shot it is because I've shot my buddy Georgie's a couple times, and his is suppressed, so if I know his is coming out, um, I'll just shoot his. But I want to get a suppressor for mine. I do have a couple other 300 blackouts that are unsuppressed, so that's also why this is kind of on the back burner. I don't know exactly what suppressor I want to put on there yet, but uh, I definitely want to do something. But yeah, Daniel Defense PDW, it's got the Maxim brace on there. I am running a Razer AMG Optic from uh, Vortex, and then it's on a Unity mount. And then for the light, this is a very short gun, so I didn't really feel the need to put like a Surefire like rifle light on there, or I guess any other rifle light. So um, I ended up throwing this Surefire X300 on there. And what's cool is it's basically 100% ambidextrous, so the way you grab it, you could press it from either side. But this is a pistol light. Um, I just figured it would probably be within a short range. So, I mean, now to 100 yards, I'd say this is going to be mostly doable. But yeah, muzzle device is just the factory one. But yeah, my plan is to eventually put a suppressor on here. I just don't know which one yet. And then trigger wise, I bought this used and it did come with a binary trigger. I don't know which one's in there. Um, to be honest, I don't really care about binary triggers, specifically in ARs. I have one in my CZ Scorpion. It's pretty fun. My Scorpion also came with that. So. Um, just know I don't really go out of my way to buy a binary trigger for my gun. They just, if it came with it, cool. If not, I mean, I don't care about them that much. One, it's not as like, I mean, it's fun, but it's not the same as full auto and I've shot full auto enough times. And then it's not as precise, I guess, for most shooting. But I mean, you can be accurate enough. I just, yeah, I, I don't know why I'm nitpicking it so bad. I just like semi-auto more or just full auto, but I don't have any full auto. So yep, the end of defense PDW and I like my little setup on here. Keeps it slim. If I was going to do a sling on this one, I would probably do a single point sling from the back right here just to keep it all small and compact. But yeah, I think it looks pretty good and I will shoot it um, for sure this winter once it cools down a little bit and hopefully I'll get a suppressor for it soon. All right, now that we got that one out of the way, I got a few actual handguns to show you. So first up, we have a Dan Wesson Discretion here. This one's pretty cool because it's chambered in 9mm. It's commander size, so it's a little bit shorter on the barrel. And uh, even though it's 9mm, it's a lot of fun. I know 45 is probably the main go-to round for 1911s, but this thing is very fun to shoot suppressed. I'll show you a clip right now. Right, we're gonna go fast. So 115 grain, two rounds. 147. 158. 165. So yeah, it shoots like a dream. Uh, I'm running Surefire X300 on here as well. I really like X300s for pistol lights, and then I also run a lot of Streamlight TLR1s. But yeah, Dan Wesson does really good 1911s. This is the only one I currently have from them, but I have shot others, and I feel like their action is just buttery smooth. Like, I really like it. And trigger's nice. This one's got suppressor sights. It would be really cool if it had an RMR cut. I'm not gonna go out of my way to go get it cut for an RMR, but I think it would be cool. Uh, the sights, it's kind of like the snowman sight where you just have a dot and a dot on top. Not a fan of that. I would much rather have the two dots on the rear and the one on the front, but that's just how it came. And then it's 10 round 9mm 1911 mags. So Dan Weston Discretion. I also have this one. This one's never been on the channel before. This is an Archon Type B. These are kind of interesting because I feel like they were around and then they weren't around, but I think you can currently buy a Gen 2 of it and they do uh, optics cut ones now, but yeah, this is an Archon Type B. It's a German pistol. I've only taken it out shooting a couple times. It shoots good. It's not like revolutionary in my mind, but trigger, I mean, it shoots fine. I feel like my way of describing pistol triggers versus other people, I feel like a lot of people complain about a five pound trigger where, I don't know, I'm very used to it. And it's got like some take up, a wall, and then the break, but it's pretty light. So in most of my guns, I don't change triggers at all. I just run them the way they are. But I would say it's a pretty decent trigger. The sights also has a snowman sight set up. So the dot and the dot, uh, they are night sights, but it shoots fine. I've only taken it out again a couple times, but I do think it's a cool pistol. I like the feel of it. It's German. Um, I don't know what else they're really known for, but uh, not Germany, but like just this company. So again, this is an Archon Type B, and I believe they're currently on the Gen 2. 
you notice my mag here, it's not like fully seated. I mean, it is seated, but there's a pretty big gap right there. I don't know if that's normal on them, but my hand, it's small enough to where it's not gonna matter. It comes in a cool little pouch too, so. It comes in this pouch, I got four mags for it and uh, everything else it came with, but yeah, I'll do uh, more shooting with this down the road. I don't have any videos to show you guys of it, but it, again, it shoots pretty nice for what it is. Um, I think they're about a thousand bucks. I don't think it's necessarily a thousand dollar pistol in my mind. I bought it used for 650-ish a few years ago. So um, yeah, it's cool, but not like a thousand dollars cool. One that was a thousand dollars cool at the time was this one. So this is a Kunin 357 Mag 1911. I bought it for a thousand dollars like four or five years ago. They have skyrocketed since then because they went out of business. Um, they are not worth the three to $5,000 they're selling for, but it is a cool pistol. Um, I should have bought this other one. I, there was one I found at a gun show for $1,000 from another dealer and I should have bought it, but I already had it. So I was like, yeah, I don't need another one, but um, it is cool for $1,000. I think this is a very cool pistol. I like the design of it. Again, it's 357 Magnum, which is not common in a 1911. I've done videos shooting this a couple times and it's mostly reliable, can be a little finicky with ammo, but when it's shooting, it's pretty awesome because it shoots a giant halo ring. And it's got some power, so yeah, very cool pistol. Sucks that they went out of business, but it's kind of, I guess it's kind of a gimmick 1911 because honestly, again, 357 mag is not the greatest for it. It's a revolver round, so it just doesn't feed reliably in a gun like this, or at least that's my, um, experience with it, but it is a cool pistol. Nonetheless, it's a big, massive 1911. I mean, if you compare this to the nine mil one here, like the frame just is like so much longer. Like this is thick, but it's not like as lengthy as that one. So I really like it and it's got some pop to it. So it's kind of a eye catching 1911 at the range. Next one here is another one you guys haven't seen on my channel before. Comment down below if you know what this is, but I'm about to tell you anyways. This is a Japanese Nambu. It's a Type 14. Uh, this is, I believe, a World War II era pistol. And if I remember right, I don't know the exact year, but it's got 15 dash, or 15 dot six. So I think that, was that means it was made June 15th. Could be mistaken on that. I vaguely remember the date code on these, but um, yeah, it shoots eight mil Nambu. I have never shot it. That's not a common round and this is not a common gun, but uh, at some point I'd like to get some ammo. These are not supposed to be reliable pistols or I've heard mixed things about them. Mine is in really good shape. I think I got two mags with it because I also have the leather holster right here. So yeah, I got a second mag in here and this is the original like holster for it, which is cool. You used to see these, I feel like a lot more often, like we would see maybe one every other month at our store, but honestly, we probably haven't had one in a year or two. I bought this years ago as well. At the time, I think they were like 500 ish dollars. I'm sure they've gone up since then. I don't know off the top of my head exactly how much they are. Your safety is right here. And uh, yeah, the uh, Ruger 22 or the Ruger standard automatic, whatever you want to call it. Everyone thinks it was designed off a of Luger, but it was actually designed off the Nambu here. So your charging handle or your bolt is right here. So if you think about a Ruger pistol, like their 2245s, their Mark IV, or whatever they're on, um, this is what it was designed off of is the Nambu. So yeah, interesting gun. You don't want to dry fire. It. Apparently that'll break them. So I don't dry fire it, but very cool. At some point I'd like to get some ammo and shoot it for you guys. Cause I do think it'd be a lot of fun to shoot. All right. Next up, we got kind of different spectrum of the gun. This is a VZ 61, also known as Scorpion with a K and mine is chambered in 32 auto. Uh, they made them in a couple different calibers. You'll see them in like 380. The original caliber, as far as I know, was 32 ACP. But yeah, this was made by D-Technic, right? Uh, D-Technic, Czech Republic, and then it was imported here. Uh, again, 32 auto, I think this is a 30 round mag. It's either 20 or 30, I forget. I did a video shooting this uh, a couple months ago. I should remember this, but um, I got a few different mags for it. Where'd my little one go? Oh, here we go. So got these two different mags for it. I got a bunch of mags, which is awesome. Um, they were importing these a lot more often. I don't feel like they've done them anytime recently, but it's a cool pistol. Um, you'll see him in video games. You'll see him in movies. I think uh, Captain America Winter Soldier, he had a machine gun of this and they come with a, well, mine doesn't come with it, but they make a top folding wire stock for these, which would be cool. I just don't really see myself wanting to spend $200 to SBR this plus buy the stock because I mean, it's an okay gun to shoot. It's, it, it shoots just fine as a pistol because it's 32 auto, has no recoil. Um, yeah, charging handles right here. But if you want to see the video of it, again, I did it a couple months ago 
And it's a cool gun, has no recoil. Accuracy, it's okay, it's not great, but definitely an odd pistol. I also have the modern CZ Scorpion, so having both of them I thought was pretty cool. But yeah, it's just an interesting gun from the Czech Republic. So there's that one. And then this one, you guys might not find interesting, but I think it's interesting. So this is my main gun. It's okay, this is a safe direction to unload it. Uh, this is my main pistol, period. I shoot this the most. I probably have about 11,000 rounds on here now. And this is a Shadow Systems MR918. The reason why I think this one's cool, one, it's my favorite pistol to shoot, but two, it's an MR918, so it's one of the earlier ones. I haven't seen an MR918 in years now, so um, I don't know how many they produced before they went to the 920, but yeah, again, I have about 11,000 rounds on it. It is my main pistol for any type of competition shooting or uh, like tactical games, duty shooting. If the world came to an end, this is what I would grab. Yes, I have a lot of Glocks. I know it looks like a Glock. I just like this one more. Uh, the trigger on mine, I mean, it's amazing. It probably started out life as a five and a half pound trigger, but I mean, it's pretty light because it's so broken in. I think a lot of people get fixated on triggers, but they will never shoot enough rounds to actually break a trigger in, so it doesn't matter. Um, that's at least my experience working at the store I work at because people will buy a gun, change the trigger on it, and sell it back to us, and I'm like, this thing doesn't even look like it has two boxes of ammo through it. So um, yeah, if you're gonna get a gun and you're worried about the trigger, go shoot 500 to 1,000 rounds before you complain about it. Like. Get, get the training wheels off because, I mean, this trigger is great. And I pick up a modern MR920, DR920, whatever. My trigger feels way better than a Shadow Systems off the shelf. But I've just shot a lot of rounds through it. And I actually shoot this better than a Glock, which is why it's my main gun. Um, again, I'm not really for changing all the internals on a Glock. I have a bunch of Glocks. I enjoy shooting them. But I was okay with trying a new one because at the time, I got this used for about 400 bucks from a friend of mine. So I didn't even buy this at the store. But... Uh, yeah, at the time they were a lot less expensive. They kind of went up in price, but same thing with like Canix. Canix used to be $200. Now you spend almost $1,000 on cool Canix. I mean, they are cool, but um, yeah, companies will eventually raise prices if they start out really good. And I feel like they did good, but out of the box, I mean, it looks like a Glock. I just like it more than a Glock. And uh, yeah, again, it's my most shot pistol. Eventually I'd like to get another one. Um, I want to get a DR920L, which is like their Glock 34 size one. So. That is on the plan, but again, I shoot this really well, and I don't buy pistols as much as I buy rifles, so I, they kind of get on the back burner. All right, um, and I'll show you this one, and then I have one more to show you. So this one's pretty cool. If you guys know what this is, this is a Tech 9 Iconic gun. Um, mine is specifically a Tech DC 9. They went through a few variations. So you have a straight up Tech 9, that's what TEC 9, um, I want to get that because of the wrapper. I actually have one set aside at one of our stores that I'm going to get. But this is a Tech DC9. I don't know the difference between them exactly. I mean, it seems like the same damn gun. But uh, they also have the AB10, which is after band 10, I believe. And uh, yeah, I think those are the main ones. You have Tech 9, Tech DC9, AB10. There might be other ones, but they're all relatively the same. They've just kind of renamed them. But yeah, it's a 9mm pistol. Uh, they made these full auto. Um, I think think they made stocks from too I'm not sure mine just has this little sling on there and honestly shooting wise it shoots pretty good it's been a little bit since I've shot this one um, their firing pins are notorious for breaking so don't dry fire them the safety uh, charging handle safety is kind of cool so it's a pretty smooth action so that's your charging handle if you push it in that's your safety so now it won't go and then some come with barrel shrouds which is what this is so there's no rifling in there it's just kind of like a hand uh, uh, hand guard for it basically so Screw that on, it looks cool. It's like an accelerator for velocity, but no, not really. Uh, you have iron sights and I mean, they're okay. I mean, it's an accurate enough gun, but I think it looks pretty sick like that. So yeah, again, this is a Tech DC-9. I plan on getting an actual Tech-9 and uh, maybe I'll get an AB-10 just to have them all. Those used to be two $300 guns. They have skyrocketed in price. They're like eight to a thousand, maybe more now. Uh, they're hit or miss, but yeah, we used to sell those all the time for like 250, 300 bucks. So I bought that one at the right time. I bought it at that time when it was like 250. Um, the second one I'm gonna pay a lot more for, but um, yeah, it, it's just a, kind of a cool gun. I would never called them like a reliable gun, like they're known to have issues, but mine, I've shot it a couple times and it seems okay. Um, but I maybe only have like 200 rounds through it. So that's just my take on it. Last gun I have to show you is uh, something cool. I've shown it on the channel before. This is a Silencer Co. Maxim 9. So think suppressed Glock almost, but this is integrally suppressed. So this came from Silencer Co. as a suppressed gun out of the box, which is cool. And they're not currently producing these. I don't know why. 
I think it's a pretty cool design. Is it the greatest gun out there? No, but um, it is smaller than a suppressed handgun. It's just more awkward because this whole thing is your suppressor and uh, takes Glock 17 mags, which is smart. It's RMR cut, which is smart. Uh, it has night sights. So I think they put a lot of innovation in it. And uh, suppressing wise, it is quiet enough. It's got a unique sound because it's not as long as modern suppressors because you figure your barrel prop, I think it stops like right at this line. So um, it's kind of a volume suppressor, right? Like you have this much of a suppressor, but it goes down and then it's just hollow space in there. So it is quiet, but it's not as quiet as like a full length suppressor, but those full length suppressors come out to like right here on the end of your gun. So um, this one's cool and unique at the time. I think they were about a thousand to 1200 bucks brand new. These are also going for a premium because um, yeah, they just don't currently make them, but it's a cool gun. I like it. I've shot it a few times and I'll continue to shoot it, but I have done a standalone video on this and it runs really well. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's all I have to show you today. Again, I know I need to post some more pistol content for you guys. I will do some more shooting videos here soon, but these are just some cool handguns that I have. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you're looking to support the channel, check out my website. It's atroxco.com. Um, I recently added a batch of brass goblin shirts on there, lift gun shoot weight shirts. Um, my Somali parrot shirt, I don't think I currently have any up or maybe I just have a couple, but I have stickers up of these. And for the month of August, I am doing doubles on stickers. So if you order one, you'll get two of it. And that's for any sticker. Uh, all the orders that were placed uh, this Monday to now are going out tomorrow. So if you're waiting on your order, it will be out tomorrow. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for my next video.